Keith Miller on Blue White Super Friends versus Alex Stevens on Orzov Zombies. Or Zombies. Nope. Orzov Zombies. All right. Um. So, yeah, we've got two of the classic Ravnica guilds squaring off here. Yeah. In a standard guild fashion. Um. All of the friends that the Azorius Senate has made throughout the years versus all of the the zombies that pay their taxes to the Orzov. Yep. Really this is these are kind of like the antithesis of what the the guilds are about. Yes, I would say that the Super Friends deck does not uh I mean it probably has some control elements. But Correct. I, I wouldn't say it's primarily cards that are like locking down other cards. Right. Uh, I think the only card that might actually be from that block would be Detention Sphere. Sure. Um, One of those blocks. And then the Orzov deck, uh, from what I recall, they were about like the incremental life exchange. That extort mechanic, but they kind of did it across di many different... So, there, there's obviously been two Ravnica blocks. Right, they did Haunt the first time. And two sets of mechanics for each. And kind of the common ground for the black-white ones have been um, paying costs. So, it's, it's taxing, but not taxing in the magic the gathering terminology and that you're making them pay extra mana right but like you are paying costs and then reaping benefits from it yep so with extort you're paying a little bit extra and then getting your returns right and for haunt um the cost is like sacrificing these creatures right and then your returns the is the haunt trigger For the Azorius guild, um, they're just a bunch of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> just just a bunch of dicks. So they had Detain in the second right. go-around, right? <clears throat> they did. Which just turned a creature off for a turn, a whole turn cycle. Correct. And in the what did they do the first go-around? So the Azorius mechanic in the first go-around is so forgettable... <laughs> I'm trying I, to remember. That I couldn't even tell you what it is. It's the, um, the thing. Because I remember, the card I remember from that block is Pillory of the Sleepless. Yeah, it's the no, Forecast. That's the, oh, Forecast, yes. Is that what it's called? Whatever the one where you reveal from your hand. Yes. Um, which didn't make much sense flavor-wise. You know um, what card did see a ton of play? <laughs> Sky Hussar. Hussar! It was uh, the Kiki Jiki combo before we had Restoration Angel. Yes. Uh, but that card was also good because it lets you, like, produce, uh, like, a controlling situation until you get the combo online. Because it, like, it taps down. Its, yeah. it's forecast was tapped down a thing. Yeah. So here's, here's Gideon in one of the better places to have Gideon when he only has one threat on the board, and you cast Gideon. That's where you want to be in the world. Yeah, I don't think you want to play a Zombies deck that doesn't play anything on turns two and three. Well, he tried to cast uh, Lingering Souls. Right. And it got remanded. That is an embarrassment. So Suboptimal starts from both the decks as all of Keith's lands came in tapped. And not where Steven you has be. this... Uh, Orza, it's not the Orzob Basilica, but it's their, the black-white, uh, makes both, but it comes in tapped. The Guild Gate? The Guild Gate. I don't know why I Or just... the Forsaken Sanctuary, one of those things. Yeah, one of those things. Oh, this zombie is wayward. Yeah, so this is a zombie that's gonna, gonna act like an Orzov guy and do some draining. There you go. That's very Orzov. Orzovian. Orzovian it is. All right. Keith on his untapped step. Peering through his hand here, he's got access to the Supreme Verdict, but I don't know that he thinks it's necessary yet. 
Yeah, and with the Dread Wanderer just being able to come right back. Yeah, that's not where you want to be necessarily. Not ideal. I think he could probably hang out for a couple more turns, activate this Gideon a couple times. He does not think so. We need to get rid of these two zombies now. The thing is, you have to ask yourself, like, how many cards is this, am I, am I getting ahead here? And so it's he none. Got, he, got, he got zero cards. Yeah, he got, you know. He got a card and some tempo. <laughs> and a dismembered Gideon. Man. Wow. He found out which member Alex thinks of Gideon. This one. But if you were to wait until Alex had really flooded the board. Yeah, you can get a lot of value. You can get a lot of, of value out of that Supreme Verdict. So Alex is going to be up to five mana this turn. I imagine after seeing Supreme Verdict, you would play and flashback Lingering Souls while he shields down. Um, I would play it. If I have another threat, I would just play that instead. Alright. You're going to let it linger. You have to. And he has to. And he's flashing it back. Has to let it linger. <clears throat> Do you have to? You don't have to, but... You have to let it linger. You wouldn't be wrong if you did. Here's the four spirits. And here's a nice, tidy answer to four spirits. The tension sphere... Spherum. He even has the good spirit tokens. Yes. The three of them. Alex Stevens in all of the size of that sphere. Just a unit. He's an absolute <laughs> unit. But if Alex can keep this up where he goes one for one with Keith's answers, oh, yeah, he's I think way long term he's going to get get the game because... Here's He's got no such resilient threats. Let's see if we can get a Dread Wanderer. Activation. Alright. Lingering Souls number one on the stack. Here's the Mana Leak. And then here's the flashback. So he's going to end up with two spirits. Oh, come on. Get matching spirit tokens, Alex. Have some self-respect. Alex, you do you, buddy. Don't. Don't let somebody bully you into five mana. Oh, there's a Jace. So here's where I can see this deck gaining a lot of a lot of value is that it can make the game go super long. Yeah. Because if Alex wants to handle these these planeswalkers, he has to attack them. Correct. And that can buy Keith just a lot of time here. Like I don't know if this Jace plus ones or plus twos. But I believe it scries one and draws a card. Scry one, draw one, yeah. And it is plus one, I believe. Even then, with just the plus one, it's gonna he's going to get to go f for a long time. It's going to be a big, long game. All right, let's bash for two. Oh, we're getting, the, we're getting Colossus out there. That's a pretty good one. Here's the J. Scry one, draw one, bounce a guy, get an emblem... Go crazy. Jay saw a little bit of play in his standard environment. Very little bit. He was like a one of in some sideboards. Which is which is fine. But this big old 4-4 zombie saw a lot more play. He was in a Pro Tour winning deck. Oh yeah. Certainly was. What was I playing during that time? Was I even playing standard at that time? I don't know. The metagame was like zombies... Mardu vehicles. Wasn't playing either of those. And um, that right now. There was a the delirium decks were on the downswing. Right. So I don't know what you're doing. <clears throat> was that right after the first wave of stuff? Of oh, bannings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't play much during the the banning the the dark times. So I played a lot. Before any of the bannings. Yes. And then the first wave of bannings hit, and I fell off a little bit. Yeah, and you thought... the second wave of bannings hit, and it fell off a lot more. This third wave finally got me. They finally got me to say, screw it. Yeah. I only played in order to uh, win a PPTQ, which luckily I took care of that. And luckily? 
Knocked it out. This next round's coming around, and we've got a lot of uh, limited ones coming up to start. That's good. Um, but hopefully Dominaria comes in and gives us some interesting decks. Uh, all the cards I've seen have been pretty interesting, honestly, for standard, uh, for modern, any format, really. Just interesting cards all around. I question some of the choices from Dominaria, but uh, overall, I think it's I think it's going to be good. All right. Here's the Grey Merchant of Venice. That's not what I call him, but we'll go with yours. Drain for two. Can't, uh, can't say I love that play. He's had the zombie in the graveyard for several turns. He could have added one more to it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else is in his hand. If he had, like, another play, like, uh, Dreadwander, Return, Grey Merchant... Right, he's Next gonna turn. go looking for a for a six land because he has Elspeth Suns. Oh, he has six lands, so he doesn't need a six land. So he just gets to champion the sun. Yep. Here comes the suns champion. We even have mana to spell snare on the back end. Spell snare or path to exile. Sure, lots of options. I would have left a uh, glacial fortress up. But that's a that's a very minor play. Yeah, we're talking tenths of a percent on that play. Yeah. But you got to get your advantages where they come from. Let's get a real die on that, Elspeth. Yeah, big old five banger. Yeah, just tell them to tell them to put those just in the nearest trash receptacle. Cause they're completely unreadable. Completely. I could read it. Oh, I've specialized. You do, and I, I'm just looking out for you. Thanks, buddy. That's what a that's what a best friend does. Yeah. If you have a best friend, make sure they're watching the stream too. You guys can talk about it later. Yeah, you can just talk have them, about the stream. Have them pop in. Talk about Gray Merchant. Um. Talk about Soldier Tokens. That's probably my favorite Soldier Token too. Is it? Very proud of these guys. I like the one that has the, the card that makes it in the background. The preemptive captain one? Yeah. I think that one's cool. Oh, we're just passing soldier tokens now? Jeez. Can't see I like it. All right. Now we're bringing back the Dread Wanderer. Why not? The question is, so Keith definitely has control of this game. Yeah, this is uh, Keith's game to lose. The What you have to do as the control player now, especially when you have a, a card like Elspeth that can apply pressure mm -hmm. as it climbs up, you have to figure out what the shortest path to victory is. Because the more, if you're the, if you're not producing the questions in the matchup, the more opportunities you give your opponent to draw those those good cards that you might not have the answer for, right? That's where you're going to lose the game. So you just have to work hard at winning the game ASAP. Path the Dread Wanderer with our one available mana. Here's another Jace. Don't want that. Oh, it's a different Jace. Oh yeah, we got plenty of Jaces. Might as well. All right, Jace to seven. Here's the scry one. To land. I feel like we want it. I feel like we want this land. Yeah, draws that one. Plays the... Ghost quarter. Is it a ghost quarter? All right. The old GQ. Get some more soldiers. Yep. I don't think we tapped any blue mana for that, Jace. Uh, the plains and islands are all stacked on top of each other, so I don't think he's intentionally... Are they? Does he have any islands in that stack? I, I don't think know. he had islands. I have no yeah, idea. He had islands on the board at one point. We'll leave that up to them. We'll leave the trivialities oh, up to is. them. Yeah, yeah. We, got some, we got some islands there. Whatever. 
Um, now we can just sit back and hold this man up. Swing with his soldier. Yeah, gets in with the one fresh soldier. I don't know what's in Alex's deck, but I would be willing to say that this match is over. The match? The game. You just don't, oh, the game is absolutely over. The I game. would I would bet my entire bank account on Keith winning this game. Your entire bank account? Yeah. All of it. You're all in. I'm Hashtag all in. Hashtag all in. Hashtag all in. Hashtag all in. Alright, so we have a path to Grey Merchant. Yep. Four Lingering Souls tokens. Uh, maybe nothing else. All right. Draws a remand. That's a good one here. Yeah, so like I said, shortest path to victory does not include this. Uh, not include the Sphinx's revelation. Correct. You just want to sit back on all your mana all the time. Activate all these Planeswalkers every turn. Plus Jace. Yep, he's drawn it. Draws the Render Silent. Is this the one that they can't cast any more spells this turn? Right. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Uh, Commander All-Star. I have a lot of fond memories of playing that card in Commander. Um, so here he is. This is not part of the plan because next turn... Well, I guess this is a good... good because Alice could attack Elspeth. Well, we've got a Jace... Plus, so they're all neg one nego if they attack. Oh sure, I would just have not attacked with the soldiers then and let the Elspeth done the work of making making the soldiers humongous, flying over for the win. Yep, here's the Jace trigger. If we're on Magic Online, this would generate just a ton of triggers. All the triggers. You have a whole screen full of them. Um, and Alex has been rendered silent after trying to cast a crusade. I want to know what's in Alex's hand. I want to know what's in Alex's deck. Zombies. Alright, we're going to Sphinx's Rev for three, draw three. Gain, Gain three, three relevant life. And so Alex is tapped out here. Uh, I count seven tokens for Keith. And so if Keith has uh, ultimate on this Liliana. Elspeth? Elspeth? We're going to ultimate Jace and counter the first spell that Alex casts every turn. Okay. Ultimate Elspeth and give all our guys gigantic, gigantic. It's plus two, plus two, and flying. All right, so that's game. Yep, here we go. All right, so on to game two here. Alex wants to bring in any number of discard spells that he might have. Yes. Also, I would take out anything that keeps me up in the air on mana. Like, I do not want Grey Merchant in this matchup. No. I want to be very low to the ground. Like, if I had Savannah Lions in my sideboard, they would come in. Um, so, Alex... Playing Green Merchant might be relevant because it's a non-combat way to end the game. Okay. If, like, Jace comes down and starts giving all of Alex's guys neg one nego, it could be very difficult to win via combat. Right. And I guess since Keith is playing a lot of Planeswalkers, he might have opportunities to resolve it. Right. If That's I'm Alex, I want to bring in all the copies of the Immortal Sun that I have. What? All the copies of the Immortal Sun. You're talking about Brawl All-Star, the Immortal Sun? <laughs> Brawl, the Brawl Brawl All Star, <laughs> the Immortal Sun. Yes, if your if your Brawl Commander is not a Planeswalker, get you a copy of the Immortal Sun. If your Brawl Commander is a Planeswalker, 
Get yourself a copy of the Immortal Sun. Yes, I have one in my. It's very good. In my uh... unreasonably good. Because yeah, you just play it, and they're like, "All right, I'll let the the Immortal Sun live." You're like, Vladimus. fine. Good work on uh, making that Band Spirits deck work for you. Oh, did he get the did he get the Band Spirits deck to uh, move on forward? Yeah, he was. Uh, he said after he saw it on stream, he decided to make it, and it's been putting up some good results for him. Yeah, I think that deck is sweet. Are you playing? How many uh, mana dorks do we have in that deck? Are we on four or six? The dorks. Yeah, so you start obviously with the noble hierarchs, but I, I personally would advocate for those birds. Those birds. Okay. Um, just because like your three drops are so good, like spell queller. Geist of St. Traft. Yeah. Like, all those cards are just, like, super-duper powerful. Steel of the Godhead. That one you don't have to play <laughs> on turn three. Super-duper powerful. Just drop it on your Noble Hierarch. Yeah. Game over. It doesn't get anything. It's not... Nothing. It's neither of the colors that the Steel looks for. Nothing. It gets nothing and it likes it. <laughs> It's like, oh, I got this steel of the Godhead, but I don't know what the Godhead is. The Godhead is this weird eyeball person thing. I think it's a, it's an actual piece of equipment. I think you, you can play a God. I think it's a legendary equipment. No. My phone is not on me, so. You are thinking of the Elspeth's weapon? The God something, I don't know. Is it the God Sire? God Sire is an 8 8 vigilance that can make God Sire tokens. Okay. The God Head is a weird eyeball thing. Oh, God Head of Awe. Just a weird eyeball thing. Flying other creatures are 1 1. It's a 4 4 flying for 5. It's a nice card. Also, weird eyeball thing. And she has more than one eye. What? Pulling it up on the screen for all y'all out there. In what world is that more than one eye? Is she a cyclops? More than a cyclops. Like, her entire head is an eye. That's almost like being an insect. Do you think it's, like, multifocal? No. You think it's just one eye with I think, one lens? So I think she's a weird eyeball thing. I think you're a weird eyeball thing. Yeah, you're not. You're not wrong. I think if you ever want to go deep into some interesting biology, look up how different. Oh yeah, she's just one big eye, with hair. <laughs> Doesn't even have like a like a like an eyelid. I think that's just a shawl. Is that a? Is it just? She it's just weird. Keeps, she just keeps a wet blanket on top of her eyes so she doesn't. The more so the eye doesn't dry out. Right. The more you zoom in on this thing, the weirder it gets. I would not recommend it. Uh, Vladimir has four nobles. Beats Jun pretty good, but does get really lucky with Coco and the two spell quellers sometimes. Yeah, that's a very lucky, very lucky situation. Yeah, sometimes the blood braid, and you just have to double spell quell them. <laughs> nice spells, dummy. Nice spells. They're all quelled. Um. Here we go for game two. So Alex Stevens on the play. Let's see if he can manage a two one for one, or a two two for one. Yeah, there's basically you could build a whole deck of of two power creatures for one mana in the zombie tribe. In modern? Yeah, there's Diagraph Ghoul, Jackal, uh Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler. I think that's it. I think that's it, bro. I think you only get your uh your three. Isn't there one that like gets a power when it attacks or drains them for one when it attacks or something crazy like that? You're really reaching here. You're reaching. Concur. Anyway, 12 is good enough for me. 
I don't know that I even want 12, but sure, if you want it, you got it. I'd want 12 in this matchup. Okay. If I can have 8 power on the board on turn 3, I'd just be like, alright, I'm coming in. What do you got? And they're like, Supreme Verdict, and you're like, oh, that's a good one. No, that's fine, because my Gravecrawler comes back, my Jackal comes back. Your Dreadwander. Dread you Wander. have the Dreadwander. Yep. Uh, we're scrying. Because we forgot to. And Casual Tuesdays. Rest in peace in Keith's hand. It looks like he kept... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was a one-lander. It's actually a three-lander. So here's a hollowed fountain untapped. We do not fear the Reaper. Here's the relic. So this is a... He's, he brought in the graveyard hate, man. Oh, yeah. So Gravecrawler is just better than Dreadwander, right? I believe it. Good. Two mana... Oh, we, we don't even care about the rest in peace. No, he's gonna... He's gonna man again. Remand. Draw a card. Tag for two. Pass Down to the turn. 14. Yeah, he's uh he's struggling there with his life a little bit. No longer. <laughs> he's got a third land drop. He's got a rest in peace. He's got this path. Yeah, we get all the options here. I would just I would choose to get a land and to play tapped here. Yeah. And then I would even pass. Just pass. You're at 14. You've got a pretty big life buffer there. Let him cast a spell or two. Yeah. And then just wrath. Wrath to wrath. Wrath and then rest him. Yeah. It's all good. Here's another Diagraph Colossus. Oh, don't pass it. Yeah, I don't like this. Yeah, he, pa he, he found the wrong target, too. So you want to pass the thing that can come back. Yeah. I don't hate a path to just, like, get my mana spent, get the cards out of my hand. Especially if you... Yeah, well, I guess we're going to try and draw a card, too. we got rest piece in hand, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, I would have been a much bigger fan of... Untap and Wrath. But now, like, that just doesn't make any sense. I guess we can... We drew into a Remand, so we can Rest in Peace Remand. Our own Rest in Peace to draw a card, and then uh, pass turn back. <laughs> I actually would not recommend doing that. For no, all don't you. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just play the land and pass, and then you got two Remands. No, I like playing the Rest in Peace here. So playing the rest in peace into the wrath is a much better game plan than the other way around. Okay. You do get your mana spent that way. All right, here's the gray merchant. It's gonna catch a reman, I'm sure. I just let it go. Yeah, it's gonna take three. If he does that. Takes two on the attack. Goes down to seven. I mean, it's not ideal, but what else are you doing here? Like, you're sitting here on these wraths. Right. Yeah, and you want the board to fill up, really. Yeah. And then you can remand to dig for answers afterwards. Yes, Tamio, uh, not field researcher. That's a good Tamiyo. Sorotami Sage, is that it? Yeah, Tor Sorotami Sage. It's a little... It's a little... Drop of flavor in from the... Cham or, uh, Kamangawa block. Yeah. Tamiyo this came to... Innistrad. The Moon Sage. To, uh... To research the moon. 
Yeah. Study the moon that was it was holding things back, right? Right. <coughs> Turned out to be very useful. Yep. As it now holds Emrakul back. Which right. Emrakul's cool with. Yeah, Emrakul willingly went to the moon. She's hanging out in the moon. Listen, if somebody was going to send me to the moon with just like a bunch of good books. I don't think Emrakul has any good books. You tell me an interdimensional spaghetti monster doesn't have any good books on her? She's read them all. She's timeless. <sighs> Gosh. That's got to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> That might make me a bit uncomfortable to be timeless. Like, Tell me about it. Oh, what am I doing here? Can there just be like the passage of time or something? Can I can I get a, a time passage here? It's real weird to think. About. I'm reading a brief history of time right now, and uh, it's just real weird to think about <laughs> some of that stuff. All right, so Dreadwander not untapping. Nope. I assume this Gary is finally going to resolve. Or with Keith at 8, it may be worthwhile to just come across with the shambling vent. Yeah, that could be a real thing. 3 4? Gideon, the ally of Zendikar. Gideon's a pretty good one. Yeah, so Gideon came to Zendikar with. The, uh, the Guild Pact. Gatewatch. The Gatewatch. And, uh... He learned how to make these allies so, so that you could trigger your ally abilities. Yeah. What a useful ability for a big dumb idiot to have. <laughs> Draws another remand. So our hand is lots of rads and lots of remands. Yeah, you could pretty much start burning these wraths on, on like one or two creatures a turn. So let's see if Keith sees it. If he. Let's see what he's got. We're going to wrath. Alright. Here's a wrath. And now we plus. Oh, we're plusing and Gideon. See, I would have plussed on the Shambling Vents. Okay. And then we could have pathed Gideon. Okay. And then you only have to deal with Grey Merchant. Right, so Gideon's going to make another ally. Yeah, Tamiyo can't shut that ability down. You really want him to turn Gideon into a guy. Right. We're going to let it linger. You only get the front side because of... Totally fine. And here's... Oh, now, see. This is where things are getting real. I like this. I mean, Alex obviously thinks the... The shields are down since since we saw one wrath. Right. But Keith's going to show us another one here, hopefully. And another one. And he draws the mana leak to deal with the the Gary, if he were to so desire. Here's another one. Tokens away. Tamiya goes up again. Plus I'll tell you what. On this Gideon again. This Tamiya ultimate is so good. Um, I don't think it works with rest in peace. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting. Let's bring her up. Let's see the Oracle text on that. Whenever a card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you may return it to its owner to your hand. So that's a triggered ability? Yes. And it's not rest in, in pieces rest in, a replacement. Yeah, rest in pieces a replacement. 
does not compute. That's too bad. It's really a shame. I suppose Keith could wait until he has Detention Sphere? Detention Sphere is own rest in peace? Yeah. Because if you just if you just fire off the emblem and you get the wrath every turn. Or path every turn? Or you, or both every turn? Yeah. So Gideon untaps. Somebody untaps. Yeah, there's Gideon untapping. I imagine Gideon's gonna try and get in here. Here's the Grey Merchant. Here's a Mana Leak. Alright, so now we're going to path the Gideon. If he falls for it. Just making another ally. Keith needs his attention here in the worst way now. I guess he has the Ghost Quarter to deal with the Shambling Vent. But this Gideon's definitely getting out of hand. Interesting. Yeah, it would have probably tapped the uh, the shambling vent unless I was willing to keep his ghost quarter up. Yep. Definitely don't want to waste a path on it. I don't know how deep. Also, that turn I might have just minus the Tamio, drawn three cards. Liliana's mastery. Meets another mana leak. So Tamiya draws a card for each card in your hand? Uh, draws a card for each tapped creature. Target player controls. Oh. So that's this a big Jace. deal. So this is the mill Jace. I don't remember what his plus ability is. <laughs> I don't remember anything about anything. Looks like target player builds one, you draw one. Draw a card, target player puts the top card of his or library in his graveyard. Okay. We're real deep on keeping this ghost quarter tapped at all times. <laughs> he's, he's committed. He does have two paths now, so it makes a little bit of sense. Sure. But still. So I'm, I'm, I know the path to victory isn't as crystal clear here as it was in the last game. Right. But I think we have a very clear path to victory for Keith. Once he takes care of these uh, potential attackers. If Gideon keeps making allies, I don't think Keith can win. Okay. Yeah, spending the path on something you could have easily ghost quartered, not ideal. Yeah. I would also be more interested when I was building this Super Friends deck in playing some really impactful, the, the most impactful Planeswalkers. Like, I would want two or three Elspeths, as that would be the one I would want to have on the board. Right. Uh, I don't know if he has just like a sub-game of 
how many different Jaces can I have on board <laughs> going on? I mean, that could be a thing. Like, he could just have, like, a side bet with with his his roommate. Like, with his crony. With his, yeah. With his homie. Hey, man, I'll bet you I can have more Jaces on the board than you can Liliana's. And, you know, they're playing the... They're playing well, the here's a Gideon. There's Gideons. We're going to have two different Gideons on the board. And I would want all my Planeswalkers to do a similar thing. So Tamio helps protect by tapping something down. Mm -hmm. This three mana Gideon helps protect by keeping, by saying something can't deal damage. This Jace, Memory Adept, doesn't play with the rest of the game. He draws cards. Draws you into more Planeswalkers. But he doesn't, you see the other two have a similar ability. They protect themselves and each other. Yeah, Gideon protect, and he attack. And he attack. That's really all he does. Yeah. Really just the old protect and attack. He's two-dimensional. Not not a very multi-dimensional character. No, indeed. Now, this, this Gideon, I don't know what he did. Probably made it to something that didn't deal damage. I... Can't yeah, keep I would track assume anymore. that's where it was. So Tamiyu is up there now. Where we can, uh, if he gets a big attack in, we could draw some serious cards. I think Alex sees the line where Keith can't really do much against a horde of tokens here. Maybe Keith starts milling Alex out. All right, just one. There's an additional land. All right, so we can keep the same ally tapped. We can make it so one ally doesn't deal damage. We can make it emblem if we really wanted to. Don't target a spirit. Don't do it. There you go. Alright, so we're going to be able to attack for four next turn. Um, Keith really needs to put out this colonnade in hand so he has a blocker. Yeah, because once you have a blocker... Uh, Alex is going to start losing a creature every time he wants to engage in combat. Yeah, it changes the math significantly. Oh, we're minus twoing now. I would have given this another turn. All right, draws because you would have been able land. to draw like five cards. Yeah. But, whatever. Well, he's still going to get to it. I don't think Tammy is getting attacked. Right, but you're now taking eight, in, or taking six instead of four. Oh, here's an emblem. All my guys are plus one, plus one. And now you're dead. Ten to the dome... We're going to get a path on one of the knights. Okay. Two, four, seven. Keith's going to go to three. Keith's going to go to one. Oh, one. And then Gary. Gray Merchant for two. Did right, it. Game three. On to game three. What an exciting match that was. Riveting modern action that is also hot. <laughs> hot rivets. Hot rivets. Right in the old eyeballs. Oh, that's what it. That's what it was. Oh, oh man! Just melting out of my skull. Jeez. So hot. That's aggressive. So riveting. What? It was aggressive modern action. That was not aggressive. <laughs> Listen, I think we have wildly different definitions of aggressive. Uh, Alex navigated that pretty well. Um, yes. It's very easy to get lost in the shuffle and not realize the 
the texture of that game. And I think he yeah, did that very Yeah, the board had well. a lot of texture. I think he did that very well. He didn't, uh, didn't fire up the Gideon to try to sneak in five damage. Realized that the path to victory lied in the Night Allies. That was a highly textured game, you're correct. Yes. Yes. I would say it was a yes. it was bumpy. It was bumpy. It was a rocky road for Keith. Um he misplayed a little bit. Could have survived a turn and then Wait. drawn like a million cards, but chose instead to uh draw one card and not survive any turns. We had the not the, the real problem was the Nambo. If he would have been able to ultimate Tamio and just wrath every turn. Yeah, but he would have easily won that game. I don't know about that. I do. I don't think he survives that long if he doesn't play the rest in peace. Oh, the rest in peace didn't do that much work. There were several Dread Wanderers. Alex has shown us that he's not that committed to bringing back Dread Wanderer. That's fair. That's rude. He'd but much, it's fair. He'd much rather play other cards. And here is a Dread Wanderer. Oh, here's a Thought Here's a Thought Seize. We're going to mana leak it. Sure. That's, that's probably the right choice. Coming across for two. Right to the dome. Keith down to 16. Here's the Sun's Champion drawn off the top. I think that was already in hand. Maybe not. Who knows? Nobody knows. I don't. Regardless, he has it. And I think, I think the Sun's Champion is one of the more important Planeswalkers to have here. Yeah, if... You're not already dead. Then the sun's Here's champion remand. is great. You go sixteen. You should draw a card from remand. All right, excellent. Draws the rest in peace. Here's the fourth land. Play it. Yeah, this is great. Plays his land. Plays the rest in peace. Yeah, and the next turn lets it. Alex cast some spells and uh, cleans it up with a wrath. There we go. Unless Alex successfully reads this texture and just goes land swing for four. Right. Well, he's he's leaving up the the GQ here. Oh, the GQ's being left up this time. That's very impressive. Improvise, adapt, <laughs> survive. I wish we could just uh, drop that meme into the chat right now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another Dreadwander, which is going to be very disappointed when he finds out what, what the card in Keith's hand is. Well, there's already a rest in peace on the board, so I don't think he's going to be too shocked to see a wrath. Alright, just... Fired off, leaving up the GQ. I'm believing you. Two, three. Oh. Yeah, not, not crazy about Those that. Those are exiled specifically from that, so they, they can come back. Theoretically, they could come back. I don't think they're actually going to. I'm just saying they could. Concur. They will be back. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. I think what? we're going to see a, an abrupt decay come out. And just really clean up, get those uh, Dread Wanderers back. Yes, yeah, so here we... Now, now that we're down this road, and we're not we're not trying to... Uh, Going down the only road we've ever known. Yeah, there you go. So now you, now you play the Gideon, because he only has the one threat. Right, but so every this, zombie he cast is going to net him an extra threat. I'm just saying this adds value to your wrath. I understand. I'm glad you understand. I'm making sure the kids at home do. Kids and, at home, you got this? And the adults. Kids? Kids, man. Kids, man. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Alright, so this is potentially going to get out of hand. Uh, I think the time for the Wrath is now. Yeah, especially because he has one on backup. 
Oh, he has a backup wrath now? Yeah. We're too deep on wraths. Yikes. Yeah, here it is. Fires up Gideon. You should attack with the Gideon. Why not? Get in there. Get in there. Get on up. Get on up. Here's what he needs to realize is that he... Oh, jeez. What? So, we're running out of time in the match. Yeah. And so Keith needs to realize that, like, three Gideon attacks and, and two Colonnade attacks win in the game, or three Gideon attacks with, like, some incremental damage from Elspeth wins in the game. Sure. Um, so, like, he, need, he needed to think about that, I think, when he made that play. Tamiya is probably going to be the, the play here. Yeah, Tamiya is going to tap down the Grey Merchant. And then I think Gideon should attack here. Because he needs to win the game somehow. He does need to end this game at some point. Do not want to be here all night. Well, I mean, the clock's going to run out here. we got 60 seconds. Let's make sure we tell him right when it happens here, Spotter Monkey. Probably should have given him the five-minute warning, but you have that. YOLO. Tell him the dice don't matter. Grey Merchant stays tapped. Is that card modern legal? I don't think that card is modern legal at all. <laughs> that card might just not be modern legal. It is not modern legal at all. Is it... Was it a gem palm... Uh, smoker or something? No, that's a different card. Alright. <laughs> Perfect. All right, it's Jim Palm Polluter. Yeah, this, this card is... was an all star in its in its limited environment. I mean, this card is insane. It's super good. If it were modern legal, this deck would be awesome to play. <laughs> like if you could just drain life them, and not drain, you just get to fireball them for some reason. <laughs> I can't. We're gonna wrap this one up, guys. Um. We'll assume Alex has not won the match because he played an, a card that's not modern legal. <laughs> um, we're going to go scout round number four, and we will see you in, oh, uh, God in a few minutes. God help us all. God help us all. All right. See you in a few minutes. Rivet.